Hey, just got back from Goodwill. I have a friend who watches these videos and he told me that I should make them longer. Hello, my friend, if you're watching this. Um, so I kind of want to, I got a haul. It's, it's not a huge haul, it shouldn't take too long, but I kind of want to editorialize a little bit more, pontificate. Um, I was thinking while I was sourcing a lot about the importance of having a formula and knowing when to deviate from the formula, having a whatever recipe for success or whatever cliche you want to use, having a program for what you source and eliminating as much risk as possible from that set of criteria that you use to make that decision of what you buy and what you don't buy. And then knowing when to deviate from it and knowing when to trust your eye. And who am I to say this? I'm a nobody on YouTube. Um, and there are people who've been giving advice about it and doing it for much longer than me. But I think there is, I don't want to overstate it because these resellers, the big accounts, they I'm sure know everything that I'm about to recommend and they do it. Um, but it's not really the focus of their videos and their, their pedagogy. But the sell-through thing, not to keep beating this dead horse, the sell-through thing is of paramount importance. I had one of my best ever sales days yesterday. I think I flipped probably 15 pieces of clothes. Half of those I had listed 24 hours previous. You know, um, for context, I do a quick flip on clothing. So I've started primarily only buying clothes that have an equivalent amount of sold listings as active listings, where those numbers are basically identical or where the solds are greater. And I've been doing that for maybe a month and a half, two months, not that long. The results that I've gotten from it are immediate and dramatic. And in retrospect, looking at the rest of my reselling career, I've been doing this for part-time gig for at least two years. I'm kind of bad with dates and stuff. At least two years and I've been doing it full-time for six months. I got laid off of my job and I, I had to become a full-time seller and take it really seriously and learn the ropes in a real way to produce results because the stakes are really high. Either I do this properly and I make the money that I need and I invest wisely, or I don't, I dick around and I buy a bunch of stuff that sits around and doesn't sell and then I have to move or get a job and both of those seem like extinction level events in my mind. I know that it's not that big of a deal. I know that I'm kind of planting my flag and insisting on, uh, on not getting a job, but I really, I really don't want to get a job. I really deep in my soul. I'm 31, turning 32 at the end of the month, and I don't, um, I don't want to have to have a job ever again. I don't want to be beholden to an employer in that way. And doing this full-time reselling thing, you're beholden to the market and you're beholden to these selling platforms and their whims and caprice, but that's uh, a whole hell of a lot better than being beholden to the whims and caprice of one person that you don't trust or respect, which is um, the situation that I've typically found myself in in my professional life, having real, real jobs. And I've had good bosses and I've had good jobs, but even those, I just, I don't like the lack of control. And I don't like the fact that another person can take away my ability to survive. So, um, reselling is fun and it's kind of like playing a video game. It's a lot like playing Diablo. Uh, that's my favorite game. I still play it as a quote unquote adult man. I played Diablo 2 for uh, quite a few hours, I would say. But it's kind of that, you know, it has that feeling of you're treasure hunting, you're going out, you're collecting loot. You know, you're getting rewarded for it and it is fun, but it is deadly, deadly serious for me. At least it feels that way. So point being, 
this quick flip thing, the sell through rate is just this, uh, this locus through which I have started seeing all of reselling. And uh, it's not something that I hear people preaching a lot with clothing. They preach the contrary model, or kind of half contrary, where you build up a lot of experience and then you run off of memory and you use your eye. You use your picker's eye to decide what clothing you buy and what you don't buy. And when I got really deep into this quick flip idea, um, and I'm not going to claim that I, I came up with this myself. This is in this is in the culture, this idea of checking the sell through rate. But it's not really in the in the culture as uh, a guiding principle of like a primary cardinal direction point, the cardinal direction point that you should pay attention to. And that's how I've come to see it. Anyway, um, when you start sourcing clothing in this way, you have to completely, almost completely remap your mental picture of of the, the inventory in these thrift stores. You have to rewrite your literacy in terms of brands and um, and what constitutes a good buy. And, you know, I'll go through um, what I bought and I'm trying to remember, there was a bunch of stuff today that I saw that that had I been looking at it a couple, two, three months ago, it would have been an immediate buy. A thoughtless, immediate, unanalyzed, unreflected upon buy. And it's stuff that I believe I would have ended up sitting on for a long, long time. And uh, I think, and I, again, I'm not casting aspersions, but I'm not saying I'm a better reseller because this is how I sourced for a long time. I'm just, I wanna illustrate the fact that there's a better way. So one example, there was a new cart, a new merch cart that came out, and there were, uh, I just, you know, the, the competition in these thrift stores in LA is insane. And when the new stuff comes out, you literally, the new, the, the racks are one thing, the clothing racks, you can take a little bit more time because most people don't really know what they're looking at. But with the new merch carts, the hard good carts that come out, you have to literally just grab whatever you can grab and then look at it because it's, it's a dozen hands coming in to grab the stuff, pulling apart the corpse of the cart. So I just, I reached in and I grabbed this pair of shoes that I found because this Goodwill that I went to today, it's in Beverly Hills and the shoes are nuts. Um, I can afford to give away that tip because nobody's really watching these videos. Um, good insider tip, the Beverly Hills Goodwill has just nuts shoes for whatever reason. So I grabbed this pair of shoes and I looked at it after I retreated to my basket, I pulled my hunk of meat back to my my den, um, and I was looking at it, and they were a pair of Ralph Lauren, was it Ralph Lauren? Yeah, it was Polo Ralph Lauren, made in Italy, leather black driving moccasins in an 11 and a half, pristine condition. Not like new, but very good or excellent used condition with you know, very little wrong with them. And I almost, I almost pulled the trigger. This instinct that you develop sourcing clothing in the standard way is really hard to deprogram from because you train yourself up to get the dopamine hit from an item fulfilling that image that you have of what a good item to source is. And I, I feel like this all sounds really kind of woo and amorphous. And it probably sounds uh, like I'm overthinking things. I, I mean, I hope that's not the case, but when you've been reselling for a long time, I think hopefully this, you know, this intuitively makes sense to you what I'm saying. So you, you want, you get the hit of getting the thing that you can brag about on YouTube or that you see other people sourcing all the time. Uh, leather, almost brand new, Polo Ralph Lauren, made in Europe, driving moccasin and a good size, should be a slam dunk. 
I ran the numbers, the numbers suck shit. The numbers, are, there is no sell through on these and the ones that do sell, the used ones sell for like $30. And had I not checked, I would have bought them, listed them, priced them way too high, or I either would have priced them, priced them way too high, or I would have looked at the numbers and realized that I had made a mistake and bought them for 15 bucks and after shipping I would have broken even or made a pittance and I would have had to have waited a long time to do it. So uh, what I'm advocating is not to source emotionally, source rationally, have a good reason for why you buy something that you can actually either explain, articulate to yourself in a way that makes sense, that is rational, that isn't just I like this thing, or you have numbers to prove it which is what I normally do. Um, when I source, what I'm really doing is I'm letting eBay do the thinking for me. eBay, if you're precise with your search keywords, will tell you what the market is doing for that particular item. The customers will tell you what they want. When you look up a, you know, let's say, uh, you know, my favorite new brand, Fair T. Uh, it's like a California brand, F-A-H-E-R-T-Y. Crazy high sell through. You look up that brand, like look up Fair T men's shirt, and you look at the actives, there'll be around 50, 60 actives. You look at the solds, there's 170 solds in the past 90 days. That's eBay telling you, please, we want this shit. Please buy it, because we want it. You run that experiment, you ask eBay if it wants a Polo Ralph Lauren men's polo shirt in large green striped, and it, the answer is gonna be like, eh, eh, eh. And that's, I, that's like 95% of clothing, is the market is either no fuck off, or it's like, eh, eh, maybe, you know, um, how about, you know, I'll give you $12. And that's, that's most of it, which is, you know, I hope I'm not being too redundant, but um, I'm really, I've become very passionate about this because when you're playing with really high stakes in this way, you know, I don't have employees. I don't have barely any space, like this back here, I have this little corner of my living room. I live with a roommate. I have that little corner and I have a closet over here, that, that door right there, that goes to a little closet where I can keep stuff. And my bedroom is a war zone. It's also full of inventory. It's a complete, I, I cannot walk in my room without tripping over something or stepping on something. And the Goodwill, the thrift stores are all overpriced. Inventory, uh, cost of goods is nuts. The average shirt is seven bucks at Goodwill, it's all Goodwills. It's all Goodwills in LA. So the retail store stuff is minimum, minimum five bucks. There's some t-shirts that you can get for a buck or two. But the, the stuff that I specialize in is all minimum seven bucks. There is a bins, there is a couple of bin stores, but they're just, they're, they're out of control. Uh, it's literally like a new car comes out and there's people standing shoulder to shoulder like this, touching and fighting each other and everybody's wearing gas masks and gloves and it, it is the apocalypse. So if you wanna shop in the apocalypse, you can reduce your cost of goods. Um, so all of these factors are working against me and I'm sure there's many of you who are uh, newer resellers or not who are, have a little bit more experience as I do and you're in a similar situation where you have to make really, really good decisions. Make them in this way. All right, after that brief intro. Let me start with this. So I was in this Goodwill for about two and a half hours. And the nice thing about doing the, you know, high sell through sourcing is you don't really have to bounce from goodwill to goodwill. You can, cause it, it's time consuming. You have to look stuff up on your phone. So I just squat at a single thrift store 
for the morning and then I'll go mail my packages and then come home and list the stuff that I bought. So I bought these for Amazon, which is a rarity these days. I actually started selling on Amazon. And recently I downgraded my Amazon store from a pro store to a basic store. And the basic store, um, you have to pay a 99 cent, sorry guys. With this Amazon store that I have now, you have to pay 99 cents on every item that you sell to Amazon. Um, I have moved away from Amazon FBA for a number of reasons. Um, and this is already gonna be a long video, so I won't talk about them too much. So I don't really buy that much stuff for Amazon unless I get it all in one place and it's worth money and it's highly in demand. So this is, these are four law books, reference books for lawyers. Um, most text, I, these apparently don't qualify as textbooks because textbooks are gated on Amazon, which means you can't sell them unless you're, you're a big boy seller and you know a manufacturer and you uh, bribe Amazon or however the hell it is even on gated on Amazon. But these I'm, are a green light, I'm in the clear. They're all flipping quick for from like 25 to 55 bucks and they were all $2. This is a good example of what I'm talking about. Like I, I, you have, I'm so cautious. I'm so cautious and methodical and precise in what I source now. And that's so different from how I used to source. So there were seven of these. I bought four of them. There were six or seven of them. And I scanned a couple and they were hits. Previously, I would have just grabbed a lot of them and said, okay, I've seen enough. These are worth money. Let's move. Um, but I would have, I would have wasted money and time and, uh, you know, I was so, so careful sourcing. Literally a couple of these had big, um, used bookstore stickers where I couldn't, I couldn't see the ISBN. So I sat there with my thumbnail and I peeled the sticker off. It took forever. And then I manually typed in the ISBN into Amazon to check it. And then... These ones that I bought, I still I sat there and I scanned the barcode and I looked at the numbers. Then I went in and I double checked and I manually typed in the ISBN because I want to be absolutely sure that I'm investing my money wisely. So um, I think Amazon selling is a great way, is a great framework to think about um, flipping used clothes or flipping used anything on eBay. If you treat used goods on eBay in the way that you would treat anything that you would sell on Amazon, it's basically the same exact criteria and thought process. Amazon just makes it all forefront, which is why people source for Amazon differently. You look at the sales rank, you look at the lowest comp, you do a calculation of how much profit you're actually going to make, and you forecast like if there is a race to the bottom with the price, you know, how solid is that price gonna be and, and is the risk worth it? And I feel like Amazon sellers are very uh, analytical in this way and eBay sellers aren't. Um, all right, this was also on a new clothing rack. Again, I just reached out and grabbed it. This, is, uh, this was easy, easy to look up. This has a reference number printed on it. This is a leather baseball mitt. Big adult size. We're getting out of baseball season, I think. But full sell through on this. Three actives versus three comps, and comps are selling for 25 to 30. Let's see if I got any other hard goods. Oh yeah, this is on a new cart. Sims 4, brand new, factory sealed. There was a Wii game, rock, uh, some rock band game that was worth 15 bucks or so. Um, but I threw it back because I didn't want to Hook up the TV to test it. Um, but that's brand new, so I won't have to test it. And yeah, for reference, I spent $54.86. I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to try to make the camera focus. Okay, this is a cool find. So dealing with competition at thrift stores is, is really important, and it's a huge part of 
reselling that people don't really talk about that much. And it, it's, it can make a huge difference, it, especially in these really crowded thrift stores. And this one, the one that I went to today in Beverly Hills, um, gets a lot of resellers in there, more than other Goodwills that I've been to. Like I know them, uh, at least by face, I've met a couple of them. Uh, and they're really competitive. You know, they're, most resellers are friendly, but resellers at this one are pretty cold uh, and pretty vicious, not vicious, but competitive. Um, so there's a ton of them. And this Goodwill is right next to Fairfax, which is the street in LA where all of the really cool uh, people with uh, a lot of money go to buy stuff. Supreme, all that, all those shops. There's just a line of, of shops where, you know, sometimes I drive past and there's literally a queue of 50 teenagers waiting to buy a pair of sneakers for five million fucking dollars or whatever. Um, so that Goodwill also gets a lot of those people cherry picking out the vintage stuff. So resellers are a problem for you, not a problem. I tend to like resellers. I tend to be friendly with them because um, I respect them. And then there's the vintage hounds who are just straight up an obstacle. They will just take money from you so that they can add to their, you know, 5,000 strong t-shirt collection because they think Vice Magazine is gonna do a documentary about them someday. So they're just sucking value out of your, your sourcing experience. Um, so I tend to be highly competitive with those people and they're easy to spot. I mean, aesthetically you can tell. Um, so if I see them in there, I will jump ahead of them and I'll, I'll, especially in the shirts, cause that's my specialty and that's where most of them go, the t-shirts and stuff. If I see one of those people, I will just blitz through the shirt section and pull out everything that I, I think might catch their eye. Um, cause a lot of it is worth a ton of money and you don't find it that much because there's so many of them. Any Goodwill you go to in LA, it gets picked over by these people. Um, and again, I don't want to sound bitter, but I, this is literally, this is how I feed myself. This is, this is how I live um, and I need it more than they do. So I typically don't find stuff like this because the competition is so fierce. If you had to write down what the most stereotypical, if you were like, you know, if, if I was writing a movie about being a reseller, this would be the find that would, you know, convert me from being a casual thrifter to being like a, you know, a reseller guy. This is a vintage, I think it's, a, yep, single stitch, vintage Nirvana t-shirt from 1992, copyright 1992 Nirvana. It has a little stain on it. I looked up a couple comps. It's worth anywhere from 70 bucks to like $500. Don't know exactly what, I'm gonna put it up for auction, see what happens. This is an example of, I didn't even, I didn't bother looking up the cell for on it because I know that this is worth rolling the dice for two bucks on because I stand to make a significant amount of money on it. So I'll kind of fly by the seat of my pants because I know for a fact that that will sell. I will not lose money on it and potentially I will make a ton of money. I feel like how most people shop is they will do that because something is pretty or because it's something that they've sold before. And it's not even for, it's for an equivalent amount of return as any of these five, $10 profit, high sell through items I'm gonna show you, but you have to wait for six months to a year to sell it. And that's, that's how you build up a giant inventory of clothing that you need a warehouse for. And that's how you end up needing to hire employees. Nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, I don't plan to do it. 
for, an, you know, I have weird ideological hangups about uh, being someone's boss or whatever. That's my thing. Um, but if, if you are just, a, if you're a, a one person operation in the way that I am, why would you freight yourself down with a bunch of this stuff unless it's potentially worth a ton of money? All right, here's a good example of something that I bought. I, I, I did not trust my eye on this one. Set my feelings aside. If I saw that in the thrift store, my first intuition is, oh, that's like some corporate jogathon thing. Uh, or like, you know, a company event uh, pass. But I looked up the brand. It's kind of sheer, hard to see. Um, Outer known, 3X sell through on these. This brand is in crazy demand. Got it for two bucks, not bad. Probably flip it for 20. This one was for me. This is a uh, Rainier beer t-shirt. This is my favorite beer in the world and you cannot get it anywhere in Southern California. I have searched and searched. I used to work in Alaska and this, uh, I used to be a fishing guide and, and we would come, I would come back from a long day, you know, working on the river, brutally physically hard job and I would sit in a metal folding chair in a shed with my coworkers and we would, we would drink Rainier and it was heavenly. I mean, just an unparalleled drinking experience. So I'm very attached to this brand. This is, this is what I'm gonna keep. That's probably worth something though. Um, cool. You know this brand, I'm sure. This is one of the popular brands uh, for resellers that deserves to be popular. Cool has 100% sell through. It's kind of like Patagonia, Travis Matthew, and that, uh, the demand is not insanely high, but it matches the supply. This is one. Um, sorry, I'm going to talk a lot about this again. This is a hoodie uh, from Gray 93, and it's got some scum and stuff on it, so it, it's not even that good of shape, but it has this graphic on the back. If it was just this graphic, I still wouldn't have bought it just based on the fact that it's cool looking. Because you, you have to know that this is, it's something that people are actually going to see. So if this was just a Gildan hoodie, and it had this, and it didn't have gray 93 on it, I would have passed. Um, unless you're like a wizard with keywords and you can get eyeballs on the listing, you have to buy things that people are actually searching for. So I looked up gray 93 on eBay, there was nothing. Went to Google, looked it up. Gray93 is a designer in LA, apparently, I think, like a graphic designer who has over 100,000 followers on Instagram. And I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the website or whatever, but I did some sleuthing. So this is a niche thing that people care about, even though there's no track record on eBay. I'm willing to spend money on it, 699, because I'm willing to bet this is worth at least 50 bucks. Total speculation, but uh, I think this is gonna be worth it. It's potentially worth more. And you know, uh, I don't know, I think because this Goodwill is so close to Fairfax, I'm really, um, I'll do extensive detective work in that way because you, you run into these tiny little brands that are very, very niche um, and it's like art shit. Um, and you just, you find weird stuff. Too. Like there was a long sleeve, bright yellow graphic schoolboy Q shirt that I ended up passing on, which is another good illustration here. Um, schoolboy Q is a rapper, and it was the, the very hypey kind of streetwear thing with the weird graphics on the sleeves, and there's probably some Japanese on it. Um, and I looked up, I, you know, I, I ran the searches 
and it was one of those situations where there was demand for not that specific shirt i couldn't find it but there was demand for schoolboy q shirts but it was like 50 percent sell through and i looked at the solds the solds were selling for maximum 30 bucks so again to say this again and i hope this isn't irritating that i'm just hammering this point home but it's it's such an important point to be made um if i was the average reseller i would i probably wouldn't even have looked it up i probably would have said oh school with cute dope sick yeah totally someone's totally gonna pick that up that's sick dude um but looking at the numbers i still feel like even most resellers would still pull the trigger on that at 50 percent sell through at like 25 dollars sold um and it's just like my instinct was just if you if you accept that as an acceptable set of metrics for buying stuff you will end up purchasing like a quarter of the shit that you look at at goodwill and you have to not be emotional about it i my emotional instinct was schoolboy q this is novel this is something kids it's it's what the kids like um this is something someone will want that sentence i hear that sentence in my head all the time and i i'm constantly battling it it's like oh yeah someone will want that and you hear people say that shit on youtube all the time it's like oh yeah someone's gonna want this someone's gonna pick this up this is right for someone based on what based on what i mean it'll be right for someone but it'll be right for someone in half a year for 10 bucks profit so as cool as it is as novel as it is I left it behind and I did that over and over and over again that's why I'm talking about it so much today because there were so many instances of that today for some reason um, I mentioned this brand earlier in the vid this is a, a uh, very consistent seller Travis Matthew this had um, a branded patch Pebble Beach this is a really common I think it's a yeah it's a golf course um won't make a ton i'll probably make five seven dollar profit on this but it's worth it because it all it all flips flips really well on poshmark too this is another um roll of the dice this is kind of a longer tail thing this is from nine inch nails been finding a lot of nine inch nails stuff lately i don't know why maybe it's the same person donating it nine inch nails uh there is track record on this not this specific one but nine inch nails hoodies uh sell for like 30 40 bucks so i'll probably do a quick flip for like 25. this is a great great brand um cricket or sorry quay from austin designed in austin texas i found this brand once before at a goodwill and i looked it up and this is even before I started really focusing on, you know, being a quick flip pervert. I looked at the numbers in Goodwill and they were so insane that I, the one that I was looking at at the time had this bit, it was like a blood stain. It had this big track right down the center. The sell through was so crazy. I almost, I almost bought that shirt for seven bucks and try to flip it because the demand was so high. The demand is, it's like four X for this. This is one of the highest demand brands for clothing i've ever seen and i've never sold it so i'm hoping that um i'm hoping it flips right away and it should because the numbers are just nuts okay that's it that's the end of of the haul and the end of uh of uh the two thoughts that i had that took 45 minutes to communicate so thanks for uh thanks for listening guys appreciate it